Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Blessed assurance, thank you, Arliss. I hope you can say that too. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. He is my Lord and my Savior. Welcome to worship at Grace United Methodist Church. We're glad that you're here. And um, would just remind you that you'll fill out this, if you'd fill out this connect sheet that is uh, inserted in your bulletin and put it in one of the baskets at the back on your way out this morning, that would be uh, a big help to us, and so please, please take the time to do that this morning. I hope that you've come today to hear good news, because there is good news, and it is the good news of God's love offered to us in Jesus. That's the story of the Bible. God loves us, and he's given himself to us, and therefore we can have the assurance that he loves us and that he is with us. That's the story that we find in the book of Ruth that we're going to hear from today. That's the story that we find all the way through the scriptures that allows us to live life with confidence and with joy. And so that means when we come together, we have a lot to celebrate. We have a lot to rejoice in. We have a lot for which to praise God. And so come to celebrate, come to rejoice, come to give yourself to the Lord and be prepared to go and share that good news with others as you leave today. So welcome, take the time in whatever way you're comfortable to share greetings with those around you. If you'd like to stand to do that, just say hello at least and, uh, and greet those around you this morning. After you've had time to do that, I'll invite you to be seated and we'll uh, have the choir lead us in the intro.
Amen. Yes, we will sing, but before we sing, we'll do the call to worship. So if you'll stand, we'll do that and join with me in this responsive call to worship. Come, let us sing of the steadfast love of the Lord forever. With our mouths, we will proclaim his faithfulness to all generations. Let us declare that his steadfast love is established forever. His faithfulness is as firm as the heavens. The Lord said, I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn to my ser servant David. I will establish your descendants forever and build your throne for all generations. Praise, praise the, the Lord. Lord. Let us praise the Lord as we sing, Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. be seated. I'll tell you what, what's a worship service unless we can give some praise and thanks to God mm -hmm. and to worship him for his faithfulness and his goodness towards us, for great is his faithfulness to us. 
like to just lift up three, three uh, praises that we can celebrate today. First of all, I'd like to just acknowledge and celebrate the prayer that went on for Decatur and the surrounding communities for Macon County uh, last week for 24 hours a day, seven days a week prayer. And, um, and Cindy Gergerich had a really a crucial part of that and we give thanks to God for her uh, and acknowledge that. But we praise God for prayer and some of you participated in that. And oh, oh she's got her hand up, Cindy, yes. Ends tomorrow at five, I think, six tomorrow, six o'clock, right? Okay, so still have some hours available. See Cindy after worship. If you haven't been part of it, um, then you ought to be. And so please find the, find the slip in there at the very end and do that. It may not be the last time that's done. It may be something that we're just getting warmed up at. And so there may be some additional times that will be coming. So praise, praise the Lord for that. Second thing, Lisa Potter is back this morning after hip surgery. Lisa, we're so glad that you're back. You're feeling better. And, and uh, thank you for that wonderful card. We read that last week in worship. And so we thank you for, for that. And Aurora Williams is celebrating uh, this morning because her eyesight has improved vastly over the last few months. She's had surgery a couple times, and she's seen color now, and uh, she's continuing to have treatments. So praise the Lord for, for healing for Aurora. Give, give thanks to God for that. I bet we could fill this rest of this hour with praises, couldn't we? All the ways that we can give thanks to God. So during this time of personal prayer, why don't you spend some time giving thanks to God for all the ways that he has blessed us. And then we'll pray together. Gracious Heavenly Father, glorify yourself in all the earth. Be glorified in creation. Be glorified in your church. Be glorified in our worship here this morning. We seek you today because you can be found. We call on you because you are near. We forsake our evil ways and evil thoughts and turn to you. We thank you that as we confess our sins, through the grace of Jesus Christ, you have mercy on us and you freely pardon us. We know that because you are so much greater than us, our thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways your ways. But we want our thoughts and ways to be yours, so help us, Lord, as we pray. Teach us to love you, Lord, and teach us to love others as you help us by your Spirit. As we pray today, we do so with genuine concern for those for whom we pray. We pray for our president, for our governor, for our mayor, for all our national, state, and local political leaders. 
We pray for godly wisdom and for leadership that aligns itself with your word. We pray for our judges and courts, that righteousness and justice may be the hallmarks of the decisions that are made. We pray for the future of our denomination and for this local expression of your church. We pray that we will always live centered in Christ, built on your word, and filled with your Holy Spirit. We pray for those from our congregation who are in need today, for the needy, the sick, the lonely, the anxious, and the fearful. By your Spirit, teach us to love you, Lord, by loving those who need you. As we continue our worship now, fill us afresh with yourself. As we sing, lift us into your presence. As we give our offerings, help us to live in the rhythm of your generosity and grace. As we hear your word, your word read and proclaimed, call us to walk more closely with you. Be glorified in all we do and say. We pray in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
wow, consider all those promises that come. Why would anybody not trust in God to guide us all of our days? That would be, it seems to be a no-brainer to me. And I hope that that makes sense to you too. Why don't you stand up and we'll sing together our hymn of preparation as we prepare to hear God's word. Be still my soul, number 534. shall gather around the throne. But until then, we've got some things to do, and God has some things to help us help uh, us uh, walk in faithfulness during this life. So hear from God's word today. Ruth chapter 1, verses 1 through 7. In the days when the judges ruled, there was a famine in the land. So a man from Bethlehem in Judah, together with his wife and two sons, went to live for a while in the country of Moab. The man's name was Elimelech, his wife's name was Naomi, and the names of his two sons were Malan and Kilion. They were Ephrathites from Bethlehem, Judah, and they went to Moab and lived there. Now Elimelech, Naomi's husband, died, and she was left with her two sons. They married Moabite women, one named Orpah and the other Ruth. 
After they had lived there about 10 years, both Malan and Kilion also died, and Naomi was left without her two sons and her husband. When Naomi heard in Moab that the Lord had come to the aid of his people by providing food for them, she and her daughters-in-law prepared to return home from there. With her two daughters-in-law, she left the place where she had been living and set out on the road that would take them back to the land of Judah. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Good morning. Will you bow with me for prayer for just a moment? Oh Lord, we come to this house of prayer and worship because our hearts long for you, for the fullness of life in your love and spirit. So we pray, come Holy Spirit, show us the way to eternal delights and earthly joy. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Well, here we are on the road again. Today we're turning to the book of Ruth, but our focus will be on the road that Ruth's mother-in-law Naomi took from bitterness to delight. In large part, this is a repentance story. Naomi turned from the land of Moab and back to the land of Israel, from the nation of her enemies and idolatry to the nation that God had chosen as his own people and to the one true God, sovereign over all of the nations. We usually think of repentance as having to do with our own personal sin, leaving our sinful ways behind. Naomi's story is about that. It's about turning around. But our emphasis today will be not so much on Naomi's sin in her life, but how we move from whatever bitterness we experience to delight in the Lord. What does the road from bitterness to delight look like? So I wanted to start by summarizing uh, briefly this short little book of Ruth. Many of you know the story, but some of you may not, so I think it's important for us to see the big picture of the overall story while we look at just these first few verses. Naomi and her family lived during the time of the judges, so you have a reading assignment today. You can read the book of Ruth. You can sit down in one little sitting and and read that book. It's not very long. And look through the book of Judges. It's a bit longer book, but you might take some time to uh, peruse that book as well. You can read all about the time of the history, in Israel's history of the Judges, in that book titled Judges. The central idea in the book of Judges is that during that period in history, Israel had no king. They did not live in obedience to God who wanted to be their king, but the refrain throughout Judges is everybody did what was right in their own eyes. And as a result, the land experienced chaos and trouble. So periodically, the people would remember God and they would cry out to him for help and he would send a judge who was really a military leader who would then uh, defeat their enemies and restore order. But it was short-lived. The people would again forget about God and they would go back to doing their own thing and then disaster would strike again. So that's kind of the setting. And in Naomi's day, the disaster that had taken place was famine in the land of Israel that God was surely using to call the people back to himself. Now, just like in our day, when disaster strikes, there are those who trust God and there are those who do not trust God. Some people experience God's help and provision in the midst of the trouble because they are trusting him. They are turning to him. They're calling upon him. And some people run around looking for their own provision in whatever way they can find, and what they find is more trouble instead. Naomi's husband Elimelech, whose name ironically means my God is king, seems to have been one of those who was doing what was right in his own eyes rather than trusting God as his king. 
he decided to flee from the land of Israel and go to the land of the Moabites, which the Moabites were enemies of Israel. Elimelech chose self-determination rather than trusting that God could provide for his family in Israel if they would simply look to him, even in the midst of disaster. Elimelech decided it was better to go where food was more plentiful, even if it was enemy territory, than to wait on God to provide in the land of Israel. That plan proved to be the death of Elimelech and his sons, leaving Naomi more destitute in a worse situation than she had been before they left Israel. She left Israel full secure in marriage with two healthy sons. After the three men died, she found herself empty. So she, she changed her name, not legally, but she just wanted people to call her Mara instead of Naomi. Naomi means pleasant and delightful, but Mara means bitterness. And so she changed her name to express the desperation of her situation. A widow in those days was in the most vulnerable of all circumstances, usually poverty-stricken, without rights in a male-dominated society. The self-determination, this is on your outline, the self-determination of Elimelech led Naomi into empty bitterness and into a decade or more of disobedience away from God's provision. Naomi got all caught up in her husband's decisions and found herself in a foreign land without any means of support and with two grieving daughters-in-law who were also destitute without a man. One daughter-in-law decided probably the best thing was to stay in Moab and go back to her family of origin. There she could be provided for. But the other, Ruth, decided to take the road with Naomi back to the land of Israel, and there she and Naomi together found the provision of the Lord. Ruth married and had a son who would become King David's grandfather. At the end of the book of Ruth, Naomi's heart is all full again, and her bitterness has been replaced with sheer delight. In that decade or so, maybe a little longer in Moab, Naomi's heart and soul went from fullness to empty bitterness. Sometimes, don't we find ourselves in places of bitterness? And it might be because of somebody else's decisions or actions. Or sometimes we are in places of bitterness because of our own decisions. And sometimes we can become embittered by circumstances that are absolutely beyond our own control. Naomi was embittered by another's decision. Yet, she did not turn away from faith, but she persevered in it. She turned from the bitterness of Moab and began her journey toward the delight that God had in store for her and for Ruth. So this message is about what can we learn from Naomi's road from bitterness to delight. And to discover those lessons, we're going to look at three things. Her relationships, her real faith, and her rewards. So let's begin with her relationships. What we'll discover is that on the road from bitterness to delight, we need loving relationship. I think when we face bitter times, it's awfully easy for us to isolate ourselves from others. But the truth is, in those times, we especially need loving relationships. We can discover how, in part, to have those relationships as we look at Naomi's example. Throughout the book of Ruth, Naomi put others before herself. She put others before herself. 
When she made the decision to turn away from Moab and hit the road back to Bethlehem, she did not demand that her daughters-in-law go with her. Even though the younger women could be of help and comfort to Naomi, she knew that she didn't really have anything to offer to them. It would be selfish for her to ask them to go with her. They would be better off staying in their own land and finding new husbands right there. She could not provide husbands for them. Yet, when Ruth just insisted that she was going with Naomi, Naomi embraced her in kindness and love. It seems to me that Ruth must have experienced Naomi's self-giving generosity over the years as they had lived as a family in Moab. Naomi's heart may have been full of bitterness, but she did not let that bitterness spill over into others' lives, into Ruth's life. She remained loving and kind, self-giving toward her foreign daughter-in-law, and she willingly took her with her on the road to Bethlehem. When they arrived in Bethlehem, Naomi and Ruth expressed genuine mutual love and concern for one another. You can read that story. Ruth put her younger body to work in physical labor to provide for the two of them, while Naomi gave godly and trustworthy guidance to the younger woman. Together, they sought the Lord's will and way and waited for it patiently. They waited patiently for it. Now, that doesn't mean they sat around twiddling their thumbs, waiting, oh, when will God show up? No, they got busy working in accordance with God's word and in accordance with God's laws. Naomi knew the law of God, and in the law, God had given, that God had given to Moses, he provided for the poor through a practice called gleaning, where landowners left a part of the harvest in the fields for the poor to gather. Ruth went to work in the fields to do just that. God made provision also for widows through kinsmen redeemers who would marry widows of relatives to provide for them and also to carry on the name of the deceased husband by having a son with the redeemed widow. Naomi taught Ruth these ways of God and helped her in relationship with their kinsman redeemer, Boaz. When Boaz came into the picture, Naomi again thought of Ruth and Boaz before herself. She did not look for a redeemer of her own, but she made sure that Ruth would be provided for through Boaz. Her selflessness, her self-giving in relationships eventually brought into Naomi's life marvelous rewards. On the road from bitterness to delight, we must open ourselves, open our hearts to engage in mutually loving relationships by putting others first, putting them before ourselves, waiting on the Lord and walking in his way. As we read the book of Ruth, it seems evident that Naomi continued to trust the Lord throughout her trials. On the road from bitterness to delight, we need persevering faith, even through the bitter days. Instead of turning away from God in her bitterness, one way that Naomi persevered in faith was by turning toward God in lament. Turning toward God in lament. She understood that God remained with her even though he allowed the current calamity to come upon her as a consequence of the self-determination of her husband. Our choices, all of our choices, have consequences and affect others beyond ourselves. That's what Naomi experienced. Yet, 
She did not let bitterness that came with those circumstances drive a wedge between herself and the Lord. She cried out to the Lord in her bitterness. Lament is a very legitimate and helpful expression in our relationship with God. The Psalms are full of lament. It is this grieving openly before him for what we have lost or for that for which our empty hearts are longing. He wants us to be authentic with him. He wants us to open our souls before him, whether we're opening up in joy or in sorrow, in celebration or in suffering, in praise or in lament. Naomi lamented before the Lord. Naomi also remained obedient to the Lord in her bitterness, doing what was right in his eyes in a time in Israel's history when the majority of people, including her own husband, were doing what was right in their own eyes. Naomi repented. She turned around. She returned to the people of God in Israel and Naomi fulfilled the purposes of God as she led her Moabite daughter-in-law, Ruth, into a living relationship with God. By Naomi's teaching and by her example over the years, Ruth found new life in the land of Israel and as an adopted part of God's family. God always intends for his people to reveal him to others so that all nations will know he is the one true and living God. Naomi obediently fulfilled that plan and that purpose of the Lord, even in bitter days as she led her Moabitess daughter-in-law into relationship with him. Naomi did not give in to despair but listened for the Lord in hope. She did not give in to despair, but she listened for the Lord in hope. She returned to Bethlehem because there among God's people she had hope. While she lived in Moab, she kept her ears tuned in. She was listening for word of what God was doing. She learned that he had provided for his people in Bethlehem, and so in hope and in confidence in God's goodness, she set her course to go back there. Naomi persevered in faith, even through her years of bitterness, lamenting the bitterness, repenting and obeying him, and never giving in to despair. Naomi nurtured loving relationships, even though her heart experienced emptiness and bitterness. She persevered in faith, not letting her bitterness drive her away from the Lord. As a result of the way she traversed this road, Naomi received great reward. Her decisions ultimately culminated in delight. Her husband led this whole family into bitterness by his own self-determination. We make our way back to fullness and delight by surrender to the Lord. That's what Naomi experienced. She selflessly loved and worked for the good of her daughters-in-law, and she ended up with tremendous blessing in return. The family she had lost in the bitter years was replaced with a new son in Boaz and a new grandson in Obed, right there in her arms. Naomi's arms and her heart were full with family once again. And isn't that the best gift in this life, our relationships with one another? The blessings of family in that culture particularly a son-in-law and a male heir, filled Naomi's life with provision once again. She was no longer destitute. She came back from Moab empty, 
But as she trusted the Lord and walked in his ways, her heart and her life were filled up once again. I love what the psalmist writes in Psalm 81, verse 10. Uh, I am the Lord your God who brought you up out of Egypt. Open wide your mouth and I will fill it. The Lord never abandons us. We abandon him and we choose our own way at times. But when we turn back from the empty bitterness of self-determination to surrender, he will fill us up once again. Well, that's all temporal, earthly reward that brought Naomi great delight, but she received an even greater reward of which she was not even aware until she got to heaven's gates. Naomi's life counted in God's eternal plan. Naomi's life counted in God's eternal plan. She had no way of knowing that one day when Obed, this new grandson of hers, was an old man, that his grandson would become the greatest king in Israel from whose line would come the Messiah who would make the way for all people to be redeemed and brought into the kingdom of God by faith in him. And of course, though there was that eternal reward that that, uh, Naomi was brought into God's plan, she also has the eternity that Jesus has promised to all who will receive him, an eternity in his presence where there's no more sorrow, no more bitterness, no more lament, but only the joy of an eternity spent with Jesus, our Redeemer. Elimelech, you see, chose the broad road that we talked about last week, while Naomi chose the narrow road of surrender and obedience to God. Elimelech's road ended off the cliff in death and in bitterness, but Naomi's road ended in earthly and eternal delight that continues to resound throughout the the world through generation after generation. Had she not chosen to take the road back to Bethlehem, back to the land of God's promise, she would have missed out on these great delights that God had in store for her. Friends, you and I have plenty of opportunities over the course of our years to allow bitterness to choke us, to overtake us, to derail our relationships, to shake loose our faith. The writer of the letter to the Hebrews says this in Hebrews 12, 15. See to it that no one falls short of the grace of God and that no bitter root grows up to cause trouble and defile many. Naomi could have let her bitterness create more trouble for her. Bitterness could have spewed out upon her daughters-in-law and ruined relationships and end in her own demise in Moab. But she did not allow that, and she experienced great reward. How will you make your way through the bitter times that you experience in this life? I have a friend and prayer partner who lives in another city, and she's now 93 years old. Several years before I met her in 2010, she had been widowed, and her youngest son had separated himself from his family without any explanation. To this very day, she has not had any contact with him, and she has been brokenhearted over him for years. When her husband died, she had a choice to make. She could become bitter and turned inward upon herself because of all of the loss that she had experienced. Yet she made a conscious choice. In her own words, she said, I decided to be, with God's help, the very best widow I could be. She refused to let bitterness grow in her heart. And instead, she nurtured loving relationships with her family, 
with her church family, and with me, thanks be to God. And she listened for, and she sought the will of God for her life. She found meaning and purpose in selflessly and tirelessly giving of her time and her home and her talents and her heart to others, particularly to children, as she heard and responded to God's call in surrender of her life to his purposes. At that time, at the age of about, let's see, about 83, (laughs) she surrendered anew to the purposes God had for her life. She received many earthly rewards in many loving relationships and delights with those who she was serving and who now surround her in her years of declining health and need. And I know that she has an eternal reward that she does not fully comprehend. Oh, she knows she will be with Jesus, and she's looking forward to that. But I believe that there will be many in the kingdom with her because of the way she gave of herself in obedience to God's will and way, and she has no idea the party they'll have when she arrives. The Lord invites you to come to him and lament when bitterness tries to consume you. He invites you to draw near to him and his people in loving, self-giving relationships. He invites you to know his word so that you may know his way and obediently walk in it back toward the earthly and the eternal delights that he has in store for you through Jesus, our Redeemer and King. We will all experience bitter times in this life, but see to it, friends, that it does not, bitter roots don't grow up in your heart and cause trouble and spew out upon others to defile many. Take the road from bitterness, the bitterness of self-determination, to delight in surrender to Jesus. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, like Naomi, we we don't see everything that you're doing in our lives and in the life of this congregation of your church. Help us walk in love with you and with one another in surrender and in confident faith so that all that you intend to do through us shall be established for all eternity and all the delights that you have prepared for us in this life, we might welcome and not miss out on, but receive and invite others to share in your delights with us. And may it all be for the glory of our Lord and Redeemer, Jesus the Christ. In his name we pray, amen. Long, long before the time of Jesus, Naomi discovered the truth that we find in Philippians 4:19. In the face of difficult circumstances, she discovered, "And my God will meet all your needs according to His glorious riches in Christ Jesus." God is just that way. He's generous with us. He gives what we need. And, um, and he offers it to us in order that we might be good stewards of what he gives to us so that we can live into the eternal purposes that he has for our lives uh, to make a difference, to count for something uh, that has eternal qualities to it. Especially in Jesus Christ, that is the case. Today, let's live into God's purposes as we give in proportion to the way he has given us. What's
Let us pray. Oh Lord, this service has been chock full of promises from your word that you have made to us, that you are with us, that you will be with us, that you will make the difference in the way our lives count for your purposes. And so, Lord, as we consider all those promises and all the goodness that you have poured out upon us, we give back to you our very lives and everything that we are, everything that we have. We give to you these gifts, these financial gifts that we have given even this day. We give them to you and ask that you would take them and use everything about our life for your good and for your glory, that it might make a difference for eternity. Thank you, Lord, for your promises that are true. Thank you for your promises that you always fulfill. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. All right, we're going, to, we're going to sing our way out of here with a little joy. And so would you stand up and we'll sing, sing with all the saints in glory. We'll join with all those that are in glory and we'll sing praise to God. of our eternal future, but that eternity begins right here and right now, friends, as we don't allow bitterness to bring us to despair, but as we keep our eyes and our hearts focused on the Lord Jesus Christ, who is risen from the dead, who's conquered every sin, who's taken away sorrow and bitterness, when we stand before those gates, we will never again have to lament but in this earthly journey, let's lament with Jesus. Let's lament in his presence. Let's keep our eyes fixed upon him and go the road of Naomi from bitterness to delight in surrender to our Lord. May it be so in your lives. I, I think we maybe ought to just let you know we're going to be gone these next two weeks. We won't be disappearing, but we're, we're going to have a couple weeks of vacation, so um, don't look for us or 
call us these couple of weeks, but pray for us. We would appreciate that, and we'll be praying for you. And over the course of these weeks, you've got worship leadership in David Wentz next week. Thank you, David, very much, and in Valerie Priest the following week. And Diana is going to help us with liturgy, so praise the Lord for for you all, and uh, we will be praying for you and worshiping in our place, in another place, but in the body of Christ. Um, so we'll, we'll raise the roof with you, uh, even though we aren't here in physical body. Go in the name of the living God who loves you in Jesus, who fills you with the life of his Son by the power of his Holy Spirit, and who is sending you out into this world to let others know there's a God who loves them. May it be so. Amen.